What's going on you Bradpaholics? Welcome back to the channel. All right, so we're gonna be working on the Rhino. I'm working on this Rhino for our client. It is an 07 Rhino 450. The nickname of this Rhino is Smokey, if that gives you any hints. It probably needs a rebuild. I'm pr I'm kind of surprised that it even starts, to be honest, of how bad it smokes and how much oil it's using. Might need a valve job too. It's back flowing through the carburetor, which means that the valves might be off. So yeah, we got it in the middle bay here. Um, it's not in here right now, but we're gonna put the ghost over here in this bay. Um, I was gonna get the ghost done today, but um, the CV axles that I ordered, they sent the wrong ones. They sent me the fronts and I needed the rears. So that's on hold probably for another four or five days, unfortunately. Um, we're gonna still we're still gonna work on it here and there. I still gotta clean the plastics up and do the I gotta redo the hood. The other side broke. I should have just did them both at the same time. Anyways, um, so we still got stuff to work on, but it's not gonna be mobile until we get the CV axles. So let's work on this, and then we'll get some parts ordered for that. And then while we're waiting for parts on this, we can work on the Ghost in the meantime. Also, I put also I put the tire finally on the dirt bike. I just took it for a very small five minute rip. Um, for some reason, the wind just picked up like horrible right now. That's why all the doors are shut. It's like 55, 60 degrees. And I'm sorry about the lighting. I still gotta change the fan lights and then replace the one that back there. Uh, we bought these we bought these lights off of eBay a year and a half ago, and three lights have already gone bad already. Um, they're really nice, bright lights, but there's something malfunctioning in them, which is unfortunate. I guess that's what you get when you buy no-name cheap. LED light. Uh, we'll start getting into this. I did. I power washed this yesterday, so it's clean as I can get. It wasn't that dirty to begin with, but I just wanted to get as much dirt and grime off as I could. I haven't worked on a Rhino in a long time. We used to have an. O, we had an 04. I think it was an 04. It was like literally the first year they made them. So a long time ago, we had a Rhino 660. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that thing. Unfortunately, those motors weren't the best. They're. It was pretty. Um, it had a lot of issues. Now, it wasn't a well-designed engine, but this is the 450. Um, I'm guessing this is the same engine they put in the Grizzlies. I'm just guessing. So, anyways, as bad as it's smoking and starting up, they seem to be pretty good engines. So, um, I don't know if I have to take the engine out on this. Probably. So let's take a look and get into it, and let's try to get this done in a timely fashion. It doesn't appear that I have to take the engine out. I think I can work on it through the back. It just gets kind of awkward, but. It'll probably save me a lot of time. So I got the head out. Um, I'm gonna check the valve clearance real quick. I should have done it while I was in the engine, but it's actually in top dead center right now. So uh, this has rockers, so it don't matter if it's the head's in or not. So we're gonna check it. Just make sure that those are good. Um, I highly doubt that the valves are bad in this type of engine. It's just not a high performance engine. And uh, so I don't think they're bad, but we'll check the valve clearance, make sure that they're in spec. Cause that will make, that is a big issue and they can go out of spec, but um, I ha I don't know if it's out of spec either. But, but if the rings are bad for a while and I got all this oil build up on here, um, it could have thrown, it could throw the valves out of spec because it, the build up's getting worse and worse. So I'm gonna clean this up and check the valve clearance. We'll go from there. The rings, and the rings look really wore out. Piston, I'm gonna, the piston looks wore out too. I don't see any cracks yet, but I haven't, I haven't taken it all the way out. I mean, just as, as it's smoking, I'm, I'm gonna replace it anyways. These are my feeler gauges right here. Yes, they are about a foot long. My Brock got these for me for Christmas. I wanted longer feeler gauges 
for when I'm doing the dirt bike and stuff. My little ones, you, sometimes you can't get into those places. So, um, <laughs> this is what Brock found. So, uh, I'm going to put them to the first use. In this situation, I don't need them this long, but that's what I got right now. Alright, so intake is between 0 .06 or 0 .1 millimeters. I like to start right in the middle, so we're going to go 0 .8. All right, here's 0.8. All right, 0.8 is too thick. Point, I'm sorry, 0 0.08. So we're gonna go 0 0.06. 0 0.06 is too much. I'm, it's probably because there's buildup. Try cleaning some of this off. All right, so I got the head cleaned up. I'm gonna adjust these. All right, guys, so it's been about five days. The parts came in. Now we're going to finally put this thing back together and hopefully get it out here by the end of the day because tomorrow I'm going to be doing some odd jobs at the farm um, just to make some money on the side, so I need to get this done hopefully today. Otherwise, my client will be waiting longer than I'd like them to wait. So I was kind of holding off on taking the gas tank out, but I think I really need to take it out so I can uh, get to the crank and time this uh, machine. So that's the next step is taking the gas tank out and then I'll take the piston rings out and then put everything back together and then then I can time it and hopefully that's that. I guarantee you this dirty air filter is is the reason that it went bad. So um, got a new air filter for that. I got a really nice one for them. So let's get let's get down to business. Got the piston and the rings out. Um, I had to take the gas tank out, which was probably the hardest part of this whole project so far. Um, just a pain in the butt, but um, got this out. So now we're gonna assemble the new one and start putting everything back together. Should be hopefully easy sailing from here. One with the Namira pistons and rings. Uh, I've had pretty good luck with them in the past and good value.
Well, it's got pump gas still, but... Yeah, we'll choking it. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. I uh, got it running. I just got to button her up. I do need to order a new choke cable for it. Um, but that, other than that, it is done. And we'll have it out of the way here soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. You can follow my second channel. All the links are down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. What a typical sight. Kawasaki owner always working on his machine. A tune-up. Seasonal tuna. It is a always down tuna because it never runs right. That is a false statement. And uh, Hot Tamale is getting some love right now. Putting new brakes on it. And uh, I'm not going to get into the CV axles. They weren't bad. I was actually going to borrow them for the ghost. But anyways, I got to put them back together. And then we are putting new ball joints on the tie rods. So that will be a video shortly. But... And then that beast, we're tearing the tranny apart again.